morning, everyone, and welcome once again to Worshiping in Styles here in Sealy's Bay as we gather through the wonders of the internet to, to bring this worship service to you. It is good to have you worshiping with us on this beautiful day in the middle of May. So what can I say but hey, it's good to see you at the Bay. I think that runs, I'm running out of rhymes on that, but whatever. Uh, this is, uh, last week was such a busy week where we had Christian Family Sunday, we had Mother's Day. Uh, it was also Rural Life or Rogation Sunday, but just didn't feel like we could give that its proper due with some of the other things that are going on. So decided that this should be Rural Life Sunday. I do want to take time to celebrate that aspect of living especially since we are in uh, such a beautiful area of the province uh, worshiping with you and uh, my next door neighbor was planting yesterday and the field looks just beautiful and it is such a joy to be able to be part of that and to just experience the sights and the sounds even the smells of of agriculture it is it is a wonderful thing and such an important aspect of who we are as a people so we celebrate that and all aspects of rural life. We know that uh, living in the country is a, is a rich and varied experience and uh, many different backgrounds for the people who gather in places like this, many different occupations, and, and so it's good to celebrate that in all its richness. I have some announcements for us, including continue to hold uh, Saturday, June the 19th for our car trunk sale which would be a proceeds going to the church. It's a fundraiser put on by our uh, members of our visioning committee. So keep that uh, day free if you can. Broadview, our renewals continue until May the 31st is the deadline. So you can contact Mary Whitney to renew or to get uh, a new copy uh, of Broadview, our excellent United Church magazine and even beyond. Trivia night. We will be having a trivia night on Thursday, May the 27th at 7 p.m. So do book that if you can. It'll be on Zoom. So if you want to participate, you can email me at dgstyles at hotmail.com and we will get the link out to you. So Tuesday, Thursday, rather, May the 27th, so a couple of weeks from now at 7 p.m. And we're hoping to have about an hour's worth of trivia and fun and fellowship together. Study group is carrying on. We'll be meeting again this Wednesday night at 7 p.m. and we'll be looking into the book of Job. So that will be our, our, um, our focus for the next few weeks. And if you'd like to participate in that, we do have an excellent group. You can email me at the same email, dgstyles at hotmail.com and we'll get you the link to that one as well. I think that's it for announcements. Am I forgetting anything? Cemetery service. Cemetery service. Thank you. Did that again. The 13th of June at 2 p.m. There will be a cemetery service at Olivet Cemetery. So make note of that. Rain or shine, if it's a poor day, you can come in your cars and I think we're going to be able to get the radio transmitter so that you can sit in your cars and tune in to the right channel and we will have the service for you. So rain or shine, it'll be uh, 2 p.m. on the 13th of June, the cemetery service at Olivet. Hmm. I think that's that. It? <laughs> Got a good memory. It's, it's, it's short. Um, just as far as COVID and what I've picked up from COVID this week, not that I've picked up COVID, but what I've picked out about COVID for this week is uh, I've been thinking about and, and I think people increasingly are, as we, we see an end to this uh, hopefully coming, that uh, what will we continue to do? What, what sort of behaviors will carry on? Uh, I do play a little bit of Candy Crush every now and then. I, I'm not ashamed to admit that. And there's some pop-up ads that come up from time to time, and Walmart right now seems to be blanketing uh, the airwaves with ads about their, their pickup service so you know you go with your car and they've got all your stuff for you and they just load it into your car and, and that I think is value added for them but it, it also it might well be something that that they'll want to promote they do it in a very they don't promote it out of a sense of you know you can't go into the store they promote it out of a sense of you're very busy people so just come to the store and we'll have all your stuff for you and they'll just load it into the car so it'd be interesting to see if that carries on as a trend and the other interesting thing is around news broadcasts, and there's some concern that 
uh, because of COVID protocols, news brought, um, when people have press conferences, they've become very controlled environments and, and they reduce the number of questions that, the, that uh, people can ask and, and the number even of press outlets that are involved. And there's some concern that uh, some politicians actually quite like the idea of having that kind of control over who asks the questions and how many questions get asked. So it'll be interesting to see after COVID is over whether that sort of thing will carry on as well. So there could be some things that are good, some things that are not so good, but uh, it'll be interesting and we'll probably have a responsibility as citizens to say what is it that uh, is good that can carry on from all of this and, and what is it that needs to be uh, returned to prior, as they say, to the, to, the, um, to the old times, to the before times, what needs to go back. So we will have uh, a voice in that, I think, if we are responsible as citizens. As I say, it's rural life. I knew that was going to happen. I got too many books piled up. That's my problem. It is a rural life Sunday, and so the worship uh, prayers and the call to worship are from a book called Gentle Rain on Parched Earth, and it's worship resources for rural settings edited by Philip Liebelt and Noel Nichols, and it's published by the Joint Board of Christian Education for, uh, I think, the Australian United Church in Melbourne in 1996. So, here are these words of call. We'll take a moment to gather ourselves as we enter into worship together. And after these words of call, we will share number 400 in, more, in Voices United. Lord, listen to your children praying. So we light a candle. The earth belongs to the Lord and everything in it. The world belongs to the Lord and all who dwell in it. The Lord looks upon the earth and fills it with blessing. While the earth remains, there will be seed time and harvest. Summer and winter, day and night will never cease. Our help is in the name of the Lord, who made heaven and earth. Let us worship God. Let us pray. Breath of God, breathe life into these hands, hands made for working in the soil, in the home, in the shed, in the kitchen. These hands were made for caring in the home, in the church, in the community. Breath of God, breathe life into these feet, feet made for working, carrying the load of daily chores. Steel cap boots or tattered slippers, well-worn sneakers, muddy galoshes, all proclaim the work of daily living. Breath of God, breathe life into our work and worship, caring and praying, coming together in daily living, fulfill the purpose of your creation, O Lord, our God. Breath of God, breathe life into us all. Amen. Have a hymn with motions 
for this morning. It's really just one verse, but hopefully uh, if you don't know this one, we'll be able to teach it to you. It's called Like a Rock. No, it's not the Bob Seeger Like a Rock. You can stop dreaming of trucks. Uh, that's where I, it's totally in my head, that song, after all the advertisements that that song ran for years and years and years, I think selling GM. But uh, this is actually a song that was uh, written by or adapted for music by uh, Linnea Good. And the words are by Carrie uh, Waylander. So there are actions to go along with these, uh, these different lines. So I think, do you want to just play? Can I play the whole thing through once? Yeah, stop? just play the whole thing through. Yep. <laughs> And then as far as the actions go for, for this, we have like a rock, like a rock, God is under our feet. Like the starry night sky, God is over our head. Now this is a bit tricky. You bring your arm like this in and you have your other hand ready to go. Like the sun on the horizon, God is ever before and then we turn our hand over and the other is to make a motion like a river running through a channel, like the river runs to ocean, our home is in God evermore. So like a rock, like a rock, like a starry night sky, like the sun on the horizon, like a river runs to ocean, our home is in God evermore. And it's not Tai Chi, but <laughs> Gary came in and said, what are you doing, Tai Chi? So no, it's, it's not Tai Chi, but you might be able to make some movements to make it Tai Chi. Who knows? So let's, let's give, give it, it a shot, shot and we'll go through it a couple of times. Again, the nice thing about these when we're online like this is you can you can get into it and not feel the least bit self-conscious. You're just you're at home, you're comfortable, you can do some of those things and no one's going to be looking at you funny. Maybe the cat. But that's about it. Our scripture reading is from John's Gospel once again. We are actually closing out the season of Easter. Uh, after this Sunday because next Sunday is Pentecost where we celebrate the coming of the Spirit to the early church and so this is a this is a, a significant moment in the life of the church and we celebrated Ascension Day this past Thursday which is the the marking of the rising the final rising of the risen Christ who has spent 40 days according to the book of Acts with the disciples his spirit has been present and strong with them. And now he, he leaves them uh, for a last time. And so the reading for this Sunday reflects that 
taking leave as these are the last words in John's gospel that Jesus speaks to his disciples. They have gathered together. He has taught them many things. He has told them many things in what is called the farewell discourse, which covers several chapters towards the end of John, just before we, we start to get into the story of the crucifixion and resurrection. But Jesus ends his time with his disciples in prayer. And prayer is part of the focus uh, for the sermon time together. But this is what Jesus does. This is how Jesus prays. And he prays to his Father. He prays to God. I have made your name known to those whom you gave me from the world. They were yours, and you gave them to me, and they have kept your word. Now they know that everything you have given me is from you. For the words that you gave to me I have given to them, and they have received them, and know in truth that I came from you, and that they have believed that you sent me. I am asking on their behalf. I am not asking on behalf of the world, but on behalf of those whom you gave me, because they are yours. All mine are yours, and yours are mine, and I have been glorified in them. And now I am no longer in the world, but they are in the world, and I am coming to you. Holy Father, protect them in your name that you have given me so that they may be one as we are one. While I was with them, I protected them in your name that you have given me. I guarded them, and not one of them was lost except the one destined to be lost, so that the scripture might be fulfilled. But now I am coming to you, and I speak these things in the world, so that they may have my joy made complete in themselves. I have given them your word, and the world has hated them because they do not belong to the world, just as I do not belong to the world. I am not asking you to take them out of the world, but I ask you to protect them from the evil one. They do not belong to the world, just as I do not belong to the world. Sanctify them in the truth. Your word is truth. As you have sent me into the world, so I have sent them into the world. And for their sakes, I sanctify myself so that they also may be sanctified in truth. Amen. You hear the word protect a couple of times in that prayer. And I was asking on Facebook the question of your own sense of prayers for protection. Do you have prayers for protection? What do you pray to be protected from, or from what do you pray to be protected? Certainly in the Lord's Prayer, the most familiar prayer for many of us, we have right in there, deliver us from evil, you know, lead us not into temptation. Very strong words of protection from evil. And, and how we would formulate that and how we would define evil would be, I think, a very rich discussion. And I invite you to consider in your own hearts and minds when you pray, deliver you or me from evil. What are, what are we saying when we say that? What's our understanding of what evil is? I mean, for many, the 23rd Psalm is essentially a prayer. Uh, it's, it's memorized by people and it's, it's, it's presented as part of a ritual for many people. They say it regularly um, in, in their, what you might call just their prayer life. And again, you know, in thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me, yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death. So again, a strong sense of, of, of wanting to be protected from, from the trials and the storms and the difficulties that we can face in this world. So, so this is the starting point as we consider prayers for protection. I had a search through the internet. I was looking for some examples, some samples of prayers that, that people give. And it's fascinating because it, it often reflects our understanding of, of what the world is. Jesus mentions the world a lot in that section. 
And, and cosmos, which is the Greek word that, that is being used over and over again, is it's a very difficult thing to get a handle on in John's Gospel. John uses the word cosmos an awful lot to talk about the world, but he talks about it in many different ways. Sometimes the cosmos means the entire universe. Sometimes it seems to mean the world, the, the human world in particular. Sometimes the world is, is a ground, the cosmos is a, is a place where the word can go um, to, to bring the word of God into that world. So it, it's a possible place for being receptive to the word of God. Uh, God so loved the world that he gave his only beloved son. That, that's the sense of the world that is full of a possibility of receiving the word. But then sometimes the world is also used, cosmos is used as, a, as to determine a hostile force that is actually actively opposing God's will in the world. So you can understand how when you hear that word, you, you need to think about, well, what is it meaning in this particular sense? And I think we can appreciate that because really in our own experience, sometimes the world seems like a neutral place. Sometimes the world seems like it's a hostile place. And so our own relationship to that wider word, that wider world is important for us to consider. So when we talk about the world, what are we really saying? Certainly in the last year, the world has become a, a strange place for a lot of us. And a lot of the things that we took for granted about this world are suddenly challenged and, and overturned and disrupted. So it's probably not surprising that there are a couple of prayers here that were written in the past year that, that directly reflect on the COVID experience, the pandemic experience that people are having. So one of these prayers was written by uh, a woman named Janet Thompson at a website called crosswalk.com. And it tends to be, I think I would be fair to say that it's, it's an evangelical website. And so the language is, is heavily around uh, the words of scripture. Oftentimes you'll find in evangelical prayers that they will weave the actual texts together right into their prayers. And so you will certainly see that on display. Uh, Jesus, my rock and my shield and my refuge, my hiding place, my fortress, my protector. I mean, a lot of those are images from the Psalms those ideas that they would use. I'll also point out that she uses a phrase, a hedge of protection. So for those of you that are, are going to be doing Job uh, with the Bible study, pay attention because it comes right out of the first couple of chapters of Job where the tempter talks to God about putting a hedge of protection around Job. So this is the first prayer. So listen to these words. Father, our universe is changing rapidly. Everyday circumstances subject us to what feels like an unstable, insecure environment. We deal with issues we could have never imagined even six months ago. It seems like the world, and thus my life, is spiraling completely out of control. Each new morning presents new restrictions that separate us from each other and the stability we once knew. Lord of creation, I want to be brave and courageous especially for those who depend on me to be strong and dependable. But I admit that I am fearful, watching the norms I once took for granted crumble into chaos. Help me find solace in turning each new day over to you. Remind me that nothing catches you by surprise. Just as your eye is on the sparrow, you watch over me. I know that you might not remove me from uncomfortable circumstances, but you will go through them with me. You promise to always be holding on to me with your righteous hand and shielding me. Even as I walk through the darkest valley, your rod and your staff will protect and comfort me. How fortunate I am to have a God who loves me beyond my expectations and imagination. Open my eyes, Lord, to visualize your spiritual hedge of protection, like a solid wall surrounding me that Satan cannot penetrate or destroy in any situation or circumstance. With you at my side and on my side, what can anyone do to me? Why should I fear? Thank you, Lord, for being my rock, my shield, my refuge, my hiding place, my fortress, my protector, my Savior. Amen. 
And we could almost do a, a study on that prayer. And, and I hope that you heard those words and, and listened to them. Uh, one of the things that I, I really appreciate about this kind of prayer is that it, it, it's, it opens up the authenticity of the fear you know, that, that, that I'm feeling, that, that, that the prayer is praying. Sometimes when we're talking about prayers for protection, we have to admit our vulnerability. We have to admit that there's things that are outside our control, that we, we struggle with, that we have fears about. And that can open us up for a deeper conversation about those fears and to allow God to be present with us, even in those things that are the most hurtful or the most damaging in our lives. Just this morning, there was a discussion about nursing and, and prayers, or not so much prayers, but people saying nurses were heroes, you know? And, and it's a nurse reflecting on what it meant for her to be called a hero. And she, she was really struggling with trying to express what she's saying without trying to feel like an ingrate for the fact that people were, were calling her. Like she, she, she loved the support that people were giving and, and she thought that it was very genuine. But, but her experience of being called a hero and her colleagues being called a hero, it meant that, that somehow in some way she, she, she then struggled to, to address that, like, I can't be afraid because I'm a I'm a hero, you know, like so much is being expected of me and, and so much is being required of me. It was pushing her into an area which was more than a little bit self-destructive of, of her own capacity, just, just the, the, the overwhelming expectation that she was putting into her own head in a way, but, but reflecting on what it is to be called a hero, to not allow oneself to be vulnerable or to not um, to be able to express some of those things that were really troubling her about you know, the, the lack of sufficient PPEs and, 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 and some other things and, and understaffing and, and overworking and very high expectations and, and how can you complain when you're a hero? You know, like there's a lot of stuff going on in that. So when we think about our own prayers for protection, can we be vulnerable enough to admit that we're not in control of these things sometimes, but in our faith, we have trust that we're not alone. We have God with us to help us to face those things. The world is, is a very uncertain place. Absolutely so. As we say, sometimes it seems to be with us. Sometimes it seems to be against us. Sometimes we struggle to know what is going on. But the heart of prayers for protection is that God is a presence with us as we face these things. This second prayer is written uh, in the Catholic tradition. This is a Jesuit uh, teacher, uh, Colleen Hanitz. I'm gonna butcher that name, my apologies, but uh, as a PhD and incoming president at Xavier University. And I know there's a lot of Xavier universities and I'm just realizing I don't know which Xavier University it is, but this is her prayer. Now listen to these words, loving creator, we asked for strength, and you gave us difficulties to make us strong. We asked for wisdom, and you gave us problems to solve. We asked for prosperity, and you gave us purpose and brains to use. We asked for courage, and you gave us fears to overcome. We asked for patience, and you gave us situations where we were forced to wait. We asked for love, and you gave us troubled people to help. We asked for justice, and you called us to be just and lead with integrity. Lord, we have received nothing that we asked for or wanted, and yet we receive everything that we needed. And for this we give thanks. Amen. Now does that when I that just, that just when I heard that I thought wow like that that's a mind opening that's a perspective altering that's a, an earth shaking kind of a prayer and and uh, and Dr. Hannett said that uh, this that was a prayer that throughout the pandemic she would begin almost every meeting with and and every session that the, she had with with teachers or with students just to, to reassert uh, the possibility of God being uh, a leader in the midst of, of trouble and tumult and change. 
And I think that's a very important part of praying out for protection, that, that in the action of prayers for protection, we affirm God's presence, we acknowledge our own weakness, and we, we reflect on where we find ourselves in these situations. I've spoken before about that expression, thoughts and prayers, you know, and, and how it's been very depressing to see thoughts and prayers becoming almost a, a cast off and, and people just say, well, there's no point in saying thoughts and prayers because it's just so empty. But some people now are saying thoughts and, and they're dropping off prayers. And I think the more I think about it from a Christian context, I think if we're going to ditch a word, we're ditching the wrong one. I think rather than going from thoughts and prayers to thoughts, we should really be going from thoughts and prayers to prayers because prayers automatically assumes that we are starting with thoughts, but we are directing our thoughts. We are directing our thoughts to God. We are directing our thoughts to the very things which trouble us, which frighten us, which scare us. We are directing those prayers in such a way that we're not sure what kind of answers we're going to get, they may not be the ones that we wanted, the ones that we expected, but that God's hand is in there somehow, guiding, holding, helping, leading, carrying, doing all of those things. I wish it was a world where we didn't have to struggle with unexpected accidents and, and disease and pain and loss. But this is the world that we live in. Jesus told his followers, you are in this world. You are not of this world, but you are in this world. With all of its challenges and with all of its uncertainties, you are in this world. You can't ignore it. You can't deny it. You can only live in it to the best of your abilities, to the best that you have been given, which is the Word and the Spirit of God dwelling in each one of us, in each one of you, enabling us to, to be in this world in strength, in hope, with faith, seeking for love, seeking healing and hope. What can we say about what's happening in the Middle East right now? between Palestine and Israel, and once again erupting into violence? What prayers could we offer for protection? How could we articulate what's in our hearts and in our minds about all of this death, and, and so often death affecting people who are just trying to live their lives? Not people who are armed, not people who are who are experienced in, in death and in violence. It's not about the army. So often the people who suffer are the children and, and just the families and, and people who are, as I say, just trying to get through the day. And how can that prayer be directed in such a way that it inspires us to respond, to help to make a difference? to put those words and those thoughts into prayer, which will move us to action. We pray. May it be so. Amen. We have special, special music. This being Rural Life Sunday, I thought, well, we've had prayers for protection. We have to think of something for rural life. Well, how about this? How about a Garth Brooks tune for Rural Life Sunday? And also a song which is essentially a prayer for protection. This is a song that was written by a woman named Stephanie Davis. She also wrote The Gift. Uh, the Christmas song for Garth Brooks, and so she has quite a way with words. This song is called Wolves, and, and the point of the song is the, the singer is thinking about the wolves that are, he, he's trying to drive his ranch, his, his cattle through, through deep, deep snow, and he knows that some of those cattle are going to fall behind and fall prey to the wolves, and he, he, he just prays for them to be safe, 
And then the second verse, he has a, one of his, his colleagues, another farmer up the road, who's just had too much bad luck and, and he's giving it up and walking away and the banks are waiting to take the farm. And again, protection for those who fall behind. And then the third verse, he looks in on himself and realizes what his situation is. And Lord, I hear the wolves at my door. And again, it's, it's got those elements of acknowledgement of weakness and acknowledgement of need and acknowledgement of help and, 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 a, and a wrestling with the understanding of what is God doing in the world and how does God interact with this world, which sometimes seems hostile and sometimes seems supportive. And, and then finally resolving that with, with hope that, that God will be there for those who are left behind. So a powerful prayer of protection. Chris Murphy uh, has very graciously offered to, to sing this for us. So do listen as Chris performs Wolves, written by Stephanie Davis and originally on um, Garth Brooks's album, No Fences. January's always bitter Lord, this one beats all. The wind ain't quit for weeks now. The drifts are ten feet tall. I've been all night driving heifers closer into lower ground. spent the morning thinking about the ones the wolves pulled out Charlie Barton and his family stopped today to say goodbye said the bank is taking over Last few years were just too dry And I promised that I'd visit When they found a place in town And I spent a long time thinking
Isn't that a gorgeous song? I, I, he played that at one of his concerts a couple of weeks ago, and I'd never heard it before, and, and man, it just it knocked my socks off. So I, I hope you enjoy that too, and we want to thank Chris for, for offering to do that for us, and uh, thank you. Do you have a minute for a mission? And this is called Mambud's Story. We don't always know the extent of the good we do, even when we are giving generously. When we make a gift, we hope to have an impact, but often can't foresee how many lives we touch or how far our care extends. Mambud Samai's story is a tangible example of how your gifts through mission and service send ripples of compassion across continents. Mambud, who is a pastor, lives in Sierra Leone, where an estimated 27,000 citizens became amputees during the civil war that raged between 1991 and 2002. To support amputees, he visited in rehabilitation camps after the war. Mamboud turned to soccer, his country's favorite sport. He founded a soccer league for amputees called the Single Leg Amputee Sports Club of Sierra Leone to help restore hope. Now 350 members strong, the league isn't just about helping amputees overcome discrimination, restoring their pride, and providing therapeutic support. As if these alone aren't amazing. Two years ago, Mamboud decided he wanted to make an even bigger difference. So he flew all the way to the Asian Rural Institute, a unique school in Japan that your mission and service gifts support. Thanks to generous supporters like you, the Asian Rural Institute trains thousands of leaders like Mambud from all over the world to grow food, tend livestock, and be effective change agents in their community. After graduating from a nine-month program, Mambud returned to the soccer fields of Sierra Leone with a new goal, nice pun, to develop teaching farms where people can learn to grow food sustainably and support themselves financially by selling that food at market. Mamboud and members of the Single Leg Amputee Sports Club of Sierra Leone now run an educational farm and there are plans to convert more of Sierra Leone's fertile land into gardens and teaching centers. In a country where the average person lives just 43 years, Mamboud's extraordinary leadership and the skills he learned in Japan save lives. From Canada to Japan to Sierra Leone, Mamboud's story is just one example of how your gifts do a world of good. If M&S giving is already a regular part of your life, thank you. If you have not given, please help transform and save lives, inspire meaning and purpose, and build a better world through our shared mission and service. Let us pray. God, we give thanks for the blessing of the prayer of Jesus. We give thanks that before he took his final leave from his disciples, he prayed to you for them. Gracious God, what would it mean if we reimagined our church, not as a community that prays, but as a community that is prayed for by Jesus, by the Christ. We give thanks for prayer for the ways in which it encourages us to be honest with you, with our circumstances, with the wider world, the way in which it forms our thoughts, our hopes, our fears, the way it expresses these things. We give thanks that we can pray in community, even if we are separated in space and in time that we can pray common words, that we can pray shared language. Give us the courage to hear 
the prayers of others and ourselves to respond, to trust, not to lose hope. We pray strength and protection in these COVID times for our communities, for strangers and friends, for those in hospitals, for those who serve, for those whom we have called heroes who often find themselves breaking down. That they would find healing and restoration. We pray mightily for peace in places where war is all too common. Help us in prayer to reflect spiritually, deeply, on the challenges of this world. Help us to listen for your word, however it may come to us as affirmation, as challenge, as silence. Hear the prayers of those gathered in this space, in this time. Hear us as we pray. We pray in Jesus' name, who taught these words to us, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Now, one of the reasons why a hymn book took a tumble up here is I've got an extra hymn book uh, for this Sunday because we are going old school for our closing hymn. Now, that's school, S-K-O-O-L, as the rappers say. We are going to number 507 in the hymnary. And this is... Uh, uh, words by Fanny Crosby, Francis Jane Crosby, word, music by William Doan. The Heart's Refuge is the name of the tune, and the, the hymn is Safe in the Arms of Jesus. Over 
within the arms of Jesus, safe on his gentle breast, there by his love or shade, sweetly my soul shall rest, safe in the arms of Jesus, safe from corroding temptation, sin cannot harm me there. Free from the blight of sorrow, free from my doubts and fears, only a few more trials, only a few more died for me, firm on the rock of ages, ever my trust shall be. Here let me wait with patience, wait till the night is o'er, wait till I see the Still, there's still some, there's still some kick in the oldies, aren't there? That's a good hymn. I hope that we will be able to join once again together in worship next week. As I say, it's Pentecost. It's the celebration of the Spirit. So red is the traditional color for Pentecost. So if you've got some red jammies, now would be the time to break them out. So uh, if uh, we we see you next week, Pentecost will be the day. Until we meet again, though. May the love of God and the peace of Christ and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you now and always. Mm -hmm.